our hymn, quote unquote, hymn of preparation, we have a moment of reflection. That moment of reflection will be that we will have silence. Silence for a few moments. Silence that will signify our humbleness before God, who knows everything before we even think it ourselves. Silence before a holy God, who knows us better than we know ourselves. Silence before an all-knowing God, an all-loving God. Silence. And let him have his holy way. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Today, Christian friends, we want to start a series where we pay special attention to the gospel according to St. Luke. Luke's Gospel is a gospel that is written for, that gives special emphasis to the Greek mind. Luke being a Gentile physician and a historian as well as a companion of the globe product Paul, his gospel presents Christ as the perfect man. The culture of that day, the influence of the Greek mind and perspective emphasize 
the ideal man. The culture of that day, which had an influence of the Greek mind, which sought to give homage, to, to give high respect to the ideal man. You will note that the Greeks, in their attempt to give an idea of what the gods were like, they made statues of the humans. No longer were the quote unquote gods that they made with grotesque images of the deities that they worship. They put a special emphasis on the beauty of the human body. They had high respect of the capabilities in terms of human intellect. Such minds of the Greek civilization was that of Socrates and Plato and Aristotle. So Luke, Dr. Luke, the historian Luke, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, presents Jesus as this perfect man. In a culture that pride itself, that puts so much emphasis on honor versus shame. Honor versus shame. As was read today in our lectionary, gospel reading, we'll focus on just a verse, the 11th verse of the 14th chapter. It reads again as thus. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. There are three complementary verses. For those who are taking notes, you can write these scriptures down and look at them as study. That would be Psalms of 26, chapter, the eighth verse. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Also, Psalms, the 75th chapter, verses 6 and 7. For exaltation comes neither from the east nor the west, nor from the south, but God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts the other. And the third complementary verse is Philippians 2, verses 3 through 11. And I'll read verses 3 and 4. Do nothing for selfish ambition, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Again, the 11th verse of the 14th chapter for all who exalt themselves will be ashamed and those who humble themselves will be exalted. 
Let us pray, dear Lord, we are thankful for this time of gathering. We pray now, Father, that your Holy Spirit will continue to abide in this place uh, where your honor dwelleth. We pray now, Father, that you would hide me behind your cross. That your people will hear what you want them to hear, regardless of what I may say or do. And that in doing so, we all will be made a better people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We will be brief this morning, well, now this afternoon. Uh, we have a very familiar passage of scripture. Again, we find Jesus being invited to a place where he has a meal. Because they're eating. Certainly when I came to this place, I was amazed on how many opportunities we had <laughs> <laughs> for us to share a meal with one another. Amen. You can learn a lot by eating with a person. Um, certainly in this situation here that Jesus finds himself and that Dr. Luke uh, is going to give us a prescription on how we may be exalted in our lives here on earth. We find that Jesus was invited to a meal, a Sunday brunch, if you will, to one of the leaders of the Pharisees. Yes, the Pharisees, as Brother Rico gave in the sermon that to the children, they had limited vision. They were narrow-minded. Many of them were snooty. Uh, but then most of their doctrine, most of their beliefs, because it was based upon the Holy Scriptures of the Hebrew Bible, which is called our uh, Old Testament, Jesus agreed with them. And, 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 and in that culture, they like to have discussions around them. And of course, Jesus knew scripture. He was the word. And these Pharisees and lawyers who were invited to this place, um, they agreed on most of it. But some aspect of life, they had limited views. And Jesus uh, wanted to take them beyond just what the letter of the law stated to the spirit of the law. So Dr. Luke will give us a prescription on how we can best make it in this world by showing good manners and showing protocol and how we should approach one another in terms of how we think of ourselves versus how we think of others. Simply put, we ought to humble ourselves. Simply put, we ought not to think too highly of ourselves. Simply put, we ought to esteem others as better than ourselves. Now that is counterculture. Because back then, as well as it is now, you want to be number one. You want to be ahead of your class. Nobody wants to come in second. Most of us have been taught to do all you can to try to win so we can reach the pinnacle of success and have some honor of coming in first or being in a preferred position in this life. That is what we have been taught. When I was growing up, I was taught in a world that seemingly was against all that people of color had to endure 
I was taught that you had to be twice as good to be considered as good and probably get paid far less than being who you are. It was always that in our minds. And that is a good incentive for all of us to be the best that you can be. But not to be, quote unquote, honor for such. We ought to be the best that we can be for God's honor. We ought to be the best that we can be in terms of doing excellence for the honor and glory of God. We ought to come to church to be the best that we can be to showcase our talents, all of the capabilities that we have, not for our glory, but for God's glory. Not to sit in places or be in places of leadership where someone will uplift our name, but for the express purposes of lifting up God's name. Amen. Jesus was at this place place where the Pharisee, one of the Pharisees, invited all of these folk, including Jesus. Maybe Jesus' disciples was with him. I, I, I think so. But you know we had lawyers. They had lawyers there. They had all of these people who, who thought they were somebody. And Jesus observed how they were positioning themselves, maneuvering themselves, so they could have a place of honor. And Jesus took that opportunity to give some information of a better way. Instead of being so self-seeking of places of honor, Jesus said you ought to be humble and seek the Lord's place. And then if the host asks you to come up a little higher and put you in a place of honor, then you will receive that recognition. Okay? You will receive the goodness of that invitation of coming up a little higher. However, if you are so self-conceited to think of yourself as highly as uh, you should not, then there is a possibility that the host may come and say, I'm sorry, would you give this person your seat because he or she is more esteemed than you are. And then you would be shamed. And in that culture, honor and shame was paramount in their lives. Honor and shame was paramount. They placed a high value on what was considered to be honor. Uh, it impacted how you even bought and sold things, if you had honor or not. It impacted on who acts your daughter in the hand of marriage, depending on whether your family or you were considered a person of honor versus a person of shame. Nobody wanted to be in a shameful position in those days. And if you were disgraced, then that was like being ostracized for from ordinary way of doing business and social activities. But Jesus said, be humble. Humble yourself. Take a place that is considered low. 
don't fixate on being called a person of high esteem. Don't fool yourself. Don't be conceited to think that you're better than someone else. And in fact, if you're going to be great, if you're going to be what God wants you to be, then you need to develop an attitude of humility. You need to take the prescription of life that says in order for you to get where God wants you to be, then you need to humbly take your assigned position, whether it be last in line, or whether it be 125th in line, or whether it be second, wherever God has you, you need to humble yourself. You need to have the mind of Christ. And that mind of Christ will lead you to take your rightful place in the pecking order of society or any organization. And when the time is right, God will see to it that you will be exalted. Amen. Not man, not yourself, but it's God who gives a place of honor. And it's God who promotes whoever it is, to be in a place of high honor. And when you realize that, you will humble yourself. And don't worry about who's number one, who's number two, who's by the pastor, who is head of the United Methodist Church, who is head of the United... It does not matter Amen. who it is. It matters to us as individuals is where God wants us. And whether or not we want to humble ourselves with the humility that it takes to be disciples. And Jesus is teaching a very important lesson on this is how Christian folk, this is how his disciples get to a place of inheriting their blessing or the meat, for they shall be what? Inherit the earth. That which we want to have in life, in terms of good works, and in terms of having a good name, in terms of being in positions of leadership, then we must first show humbleness. So don't, 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 don't go to a place. Don't be a part of an organization where you are thinking too highly of yourself. Humble yourself and then let God exalt you. <coughs> Jesus then turns to the host because it's a two way street here. Host, Mr. Leader of the Pharisees, instead of inviting all of your lawyer friends and all of your close comrades and all of the folk that can repay you. Humble yourself in your position of leadership and invite those who cannot repay you. Humble yourself and say that, yes, I can fellowship with those who cannot repay me in terms of acts of giving. Humble yourself, Mr. Host where you would invite those who have not, those who are sick, those who are lacking, those whom you rather not be around, but when you humble yourself, you invite them. You invite them because you want them to share in all of the goodness of God's blessings. Invite those <coughs> who are less fortunate than you. Invite them. Invite those whom you saw perhaps at the ball. Invite those whom you've observed as having failures in their lives. Invite them to church. Invite them to come and fellowship with you. Invite 
those who are on the streets and those who you think are headed in the wrong direction. Invite those who come and have fellowship at the banquets that life gives. Humble yourselves and say, mm, I, I, I'm not even as better as those who are on the streets. Those whom we know are living in contrary to God's will invite those people as well. Humble yourself and invite them in. Because when we get them here, when we get them to a place where we as Christians can fellowship with them, we can share the good news. We can share God's goodness and love with them, and that will make a difference in their lives. We need to humble ourselves, whether we are leading or whether we are following. We need to humble ourselves in order to do what God wants us to do. And that is to make a difference in somebody else's life. We cannot center our desires on self. We must center our focus on those whom we ought to be helping. It is not a me first discipleship. It is a God first discipleship and God has given a commandment to us as a church is to go out and evangelize everyone. So it is those folks first and then I'm going to get my reward as God. Exalt me. Amen? Amen on that? Yes, yes, yes. In this story that Jesus gives as a parable, <coughs> and also the actual event that he was there at the meal, it's quite interesting to me what Luke did not share with us. Where Brother Gomez, do you think Jesus' place was? Did the host who invited Jesus said, Hello, Jesus, glad to see you here. Come move to this place of honor. Was Jesus just standing around and just at the Lord's place and observing? Where was Jesus in all of this? Even in the parable that he, he shared, where is God in all of this? Where is Jesus standing in this? Where is the place for Jesus? Hmm? Well, perhaps we can ask the same question today. Hmm. Where do you place Jesus when you are hosting Jesus? life's circumstances or events. What place do you invite Jesus to be in in your life? Is it a place of honor? It is a place alongside those top priority issues? When we come to church, do you know that God honors is dwelling here. The things that we have dedicated and consecrated to God in this place is holy. The very grounds that this building is on is holy ground. It is a place where God honor dwells. And do we, when we come to this place, where is Jesus? in your heart. Is it a place of honor? Or do we try to usurp God's honor in this place by disrespecting or not observing that God is in his holy temple Let all the earth keep silence before him? Do we come and do we argue in God's temple? Do we come and say and do anything in, that we want in this temple? What place do we give God's honor in our putting Christ in our lives? 
do we humble ourselves and forgive those who have wronged men, transgressed against us? Do we help somebody who is down on the ground? Do we get down there with them to pick them up? Do we humble ourselves and say, I know what you're going through. I have made the same mistakes. I, I, I empathize with you. I want to fellowship with you. I want to help you up. Do we do that? All because Christ is in the honor place of our lives. This story, this real life story as an illustration in terms of it being a parable is real life. And Jesus is telling us you have to humble yourself. The doctor's prescription is this. Take a good dose of humility. Take a good dose of ascribing to the very mind of Christ. Whom was God, is God, but Jesus took it upon himself. He humbled himself to be a slave, to be a bond servant, even until death upon a shameful cross. He did that. He humbled himself for us. And in doing so, we all could receive eternal life. And when he did what he was supposed to do, God exalted him. That every knee would bow. Every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Don't worry about being number one. If God wants you in the place of honor, he will exalt you. Don't worry about who is there and who ain't there. God does the exaltation of man. God puts down one and brings up the other. It is for us to humble ourselves so that we, in due time, will receive the exaltation that God has in store. For every one of us. Amen? amen. And amen.